<laughs> this is a running episode. We hate this. We hate doing it. We, on our first date, we bonded over how much we hate running. Never want to do this again. It sucks, but the episode's good. I had Rick uh, Andrews, a great improviser, uh, Teresa Hoy, a, a phenomenal actress, and Banu Palouse, a running instructor and also great improviser as my guest. Uh, how many calories do you think we just burned? I don't know, but I'm done. Yeah, me too. Enjoy! Welcome to Don't Mind If I Don't. I'm your host, Aaron Gold, and this is the show where I don't like things, and people tell me why I'm wrong about that, and then hopefully I become a better person. Today, we are doing running, a cardiovascular exercise that is insanely boring to me, but people do it a lot. In fact, speaking of people that do it a lot, we've got two running experts here. First up is a three-time New York marathon runner and improv teacher at the Magnet Theater, Rick Andrews. Hello. Hi, Rick. Hi. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, also, we have singer, actress, and 15-time marathon finisher, Teresa Hui. Hey, you pronounced my last name right. Nobody does. Oh, I did it right? I was just about to ask, well, how wrong was I? You no, know, you see, the thing is, like, because it actually means dick in Polish <laughs> and <What>? Russian, um, <laughs> so I always say hui. But the thing is, you pronounced it the way it's supposed to be pronounced. Hui. Hui. Well, that, now that I means feel like now I'm you're cursing. It too hard. So we're swearing to all the Russians and all the Polish people listening to this. There, there you go. Oh, we got Hui. a big Russian Polish demo. Oh, there, there you yeah. go. There you go. Uh, so, guys, uh, why do you like running? Because it's freaking awesome. Yeah, it's great. I... Fair, but if you could elaborate. <laughs> That's it. That's all I had. <laughs> I find running to be very meditative. It's very relaxing to me. Um, it's also a great way to see the city. I feel like it helps me get to know where I live in a way that's much deeper and uh, more um, rewarding than sitting on the train. And when I travel, Fair. I love running too because you know you can go to a new city and go out and run a bunch of miles and you pretty much see the whole city in an hour or so versus walking around or taking a tour bus or something. I just like running because it just the runner's high is real. It's freaking real. It feels so good. Like, but the thing is, like, when I stop running for a while, I'm like, oh god. Like, the thing is with running, you need to keep on doing it because when you stop, it takes so long to get your running fitness back. <laughs> so, I mean, I've been running for like uh, well over a decade now, but uh, like, I don't have like a runner's body, but. You know, like I just love the feeling that I get and it's just something really addictive about it. And then running marathons, that's like a whole other like the next level of running high and also severe pain. Yes. Painful. I would not trying to convince someone to, to run. I would not can try to convince them to do a marathon first because no, that takes like what, 10 hours? The rent marathon, that's, I mean, maybe if you walked it. Well, if you walk it, if you walk yeah, the whole way. Somewhere between yeah. three and six hours is usually wow. where most people would. Would finish. Okay. Well, yeah. that was a gross overestimation on my end, but good to know now. This, yeah. is what, this is why we do this, so I can learn. Yeah. And the, uh, yeah, that feeling is really great. I love that feeling of, um, you, you know, like it's also like a physical, you feel like uh, at one with your body to a certain extent. Like there's this kind of machine like element when things click in. And definitely like, you know, if I've taken a, a many months off of running, and then I run the first like week or two is, is, is not pleasant. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> your body like fights a little bit, but then you get very used to the endorphins and like your body, like, I don't know. It's like this like layer of like, of like crud you got to burn off before you get to like everything kind of working well. And that feeling is really great. And then, you know, if I've been training for a while, like not running is like genuinely upsetting. Like it, I get like antsy and I get like this feeling like, oh, like my body doesn't feel good. Yeah. Like for me, I feel dirty. Like if anything, Dirty. like running, when I run, um, and say if like, I keep on running, like I just feel so much cleaner. It's like an internal cleanse. Like everything works better. Like it, you are a machine when you're yeah. running, you are a machine. So then like, I just feel like my joints are better. Everything's well lubed up and everything like that. <laughs> it just feels good. And then when I don't run for a while, I just get that not so fresh feeling. You and know? I think it's like, as a, like, you're like physically you end up physically doing things you like didn't think were capable of. And that was the thing doing the marathon for the first time that really struck me was like, you know, even as you train up, you run maybe 20 miles at your longest run. And then the race is like six miles longer than that. And it's like, I remember doing my first like 16 mile run in the training. And that was the longest I'd ever run in my whole life up to that point. And I felt like so accomplished. 
I finished at my apartment and then I had this thought like, oh my God, the race is like 10 miles long. <laughs> but then you do it. Like you kind of like, it's like a willpower thing. You, you're the, the energy of the crowd and all the other runners, you, um, and, and you, the extra training, you like, you really surprise yourself. I mean, and I think going to the marathon, it's like this weird black hole on your calendar because you're kind of like, it, you don't, you can start to even see past the event horizon of it. Cause it's like, how is that going to happen? Like you don't understand the full breadth of it until you just do it. And that is a really good feeling to like physically um, surprise yourself and to like prove to yourself and to like learn more about your body, to learn more about like what you're capable of in a very visceral way. So you're learning about yourself yeah. through running, just kind of connecting your mind to your body a little bit more. Is that, is that big time? And I think through like okay. training the last couple of years, like, so it's an act of knowing yourself. Yeah. And I had, I had been running like kind of off and on for a long time since, since middle school, but doing like more concerted training where I was trying to run like five, six times a week and Jesus. really like build up. And, you know, I was running maybe 50 miles a week. I think at my peak, like okay. that I learned so much about myself. I think it was the first time I'd ever learned about like, I don't know. I feel like I learned a lot about like commitment and dedication, which are like words that I thought I knew about, but didn't really, <laughs> didn't really <laughs> like actually having to go through all that stuff really taught me a lot about what is it to put my mind to something and fall through on it. And that's the thing. They say that a marathon is 90% mental and 10% training because you have to be mental to do it. Duh, of course. But, um, <laughs> but seriously though, like in the last few years, uh, I didn't train. Like I just, all my training oh my runs God. were just the races that I ran, like the four milers, the 10 Ks, the half marathons, the 18 miler. I didn't actually do like real training because I just didn't have time. Like I work all the time. I work two plus jobs, whatever. So then because I've run the race so many times, because I know the course, especially of the New York city marathon so well, I just do it. And the thing is like, it is getting to know yourself because I know what I can do. I know what to do to not die. <laughs> like, and I know. So you what, give yourself like permission to walk if you need to yes, on the marathon. Exactly. And this year, even though like I actually weigh more than I did last year, I ran it an hour faster than last year, which was my slowest Whoa. time. Last year was just a bad year. Like it was just really slow, but, um, hopefully ne- this year I'll improve another hour. Like if I did, you know, it's all about putting your mind to it. It okay, is a mental so game. A mental game. That's that's that is interesting to me. Um, because the the okay. So with everything that comes on this show, we rate it on a scale of zero to ten. Zero being total ambivalence, ten being blood curdling hatred. Running for me clocks in around a four. Uh, just because like I I've I'm getting more and more into working out. I I've been going to the gym more than I I have been in years, if ever. Like uh. But I hate cardio. It's so annoying. It's just so mind numbing to me. Like, I, I know, I think, yeah. Rick, it might have been you that I was talking to that said that when you go on runs or marathons, you don't even use headphones. I do use headphones. You do use headphones. I think Justin doesn't. Yeah, it was Justin Anderson that yeah. doesn't. Uh, so I think your first thing, you, when you run cardio, you're running it at the gym on a treadmill. I mean, I've done it at the gym uh, on the treadmill. I've also done it out in nature. Like when I first moved to my new apartment, I I was like, you know what? I haven't run in forever. I'm going to go on a run. And I ran to the Bronx and looped Yankee Stadium and ran back. It was about like three and a half miles. And I was like, I, I, I feel good about myself. But also, fuck that. Like, I could have done, <laughs> could have gone to the gym and like burned more calories. I could have made more gains on muscle mass or or burned more yeah. fat. Well, to it me, just running, seems, it's it, not about. I, I don't think about it like gains. Like, you're not gonna get swole. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, you actually like will drop muscle mass uh, in your upper body if you're doing like a lot of lot of running because you don't need those, especially long distance running. Um, you know, that's you know half marathon, ten k's marathons. Like you're you got to carry that weight the whole way, you know? So like if you're doing a lot of running, you're, you're, you're not working your upper body. So your, your arms will not need to be as strong necessarily. Like if you look at like marathon runners, like the pros, like they are really skinny and tiny. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I, I can't run, a, I, I can't run on a treadmill longer than like, I, I hate running on a treadmill, even like a mile or two. Yeah, it's, it's, boring. it's very boring. And the physical movement is actually different. Like on a treadmill, your body is bouncing up and down more and outside you're, you're, you're actually moving forward more. It um, does feel different. Yeah. And so I think outside is a lot, I have a much more mental sense of like accomplishment running outside. There's stuff for me to look at, you know what I mean? And like see, 
and I'm actually able to zone out easier when I'm moving around a lot of different things than when I'm staring at a TV screen. Cause I think on the treadmill, all you can really do is pass the time and like focus on like how much you don't like it. So that's, I think that's part of it. Well, that's well, very fair. On the treadmill, what I do is, um, so then I don't want to kill myself. What I do is, um, I do, uh, the interval training. So then I'll do say like, uh, like the six mile per hour, like pace for like a minute and then like I'll up it or like lower it, whatever. And then always go back to like, you know, the pace that's like comfortable, whatever the, the comfortable pace is that day. It could be four or five, five. It could be like, Hey, I'm going, cra- like, I feel crazy. Seven point whatever. Um, so I play a game. Every time I do it, so it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to challenge myself to do this. Or um, if I'm out, like, in the park or something like that, I go from here to that pole over there. All right, so now I'm going to sprint. Okay, now that's getting hard. So I'm just going to walk a little bit, and then I, I'm i going to run that way, or I sprint. So it's always So you set game. challenges for yourself. Yes, it's it, that's how I get it. It's more interesting when you do that, or uh, depending where you are. Like when I ran the Brooklyn Half Marathon years ago, um, when you get to the avenues, it's like Avenue oh A, God. B, whatever. So then I give each avenue something funny, like A for Avatar, B for whatever, bread. And then it's like, see, <laughs> cookies. Oh, my God, I would love a cookie after this. I'm like fantasizing about cookies the entire way through. So then That I, sounds I, torturous I, to me. That sounds like, <laughs> like I'm teasing myself. I can't have more cookies because then I'll be a slower runner. But that will inspire you to go faster so you can get your cookie at the finish line. I, I wish the world could see the, the intensity of the point that Teresa just <laughs> laid at me. I am physically <laughs> affected by what you just did and said. I think a lot of it at first for me is like, it's a sense of accomplishment too, like that you like running further, like doing a little bit of training or running and then you run further than you've ever thought you would be able to, or you run faster, you run a certain distance faster than you've done before. And, and like at first, cause the, yeah, the process, like, um, I think a common mistake that people make when they start running and why they hate it is they run too fast. Too fast too soon. So they go out and they run like for 20 minutes as hard as they can for 20 minutes. Now, like if I race a 5k, which for me is like about that amount of time, I, I hate it. Like it's not it, the act of doing it is not super fun because you're like redlining the whole time. Your heart rate's in like the one eighties, one seventies and you're breathing so heavily. But when I go on almost all my runs, I'm running so much slower than that. So you're like jogging. You should be running at a pace that you could have a conversation with someone else with for like, uh, you know, especially starting in with running, you, you don't necessarily need to go faster than that so that you your breathing is not labored. It shouldn't feel intense. It should feel kind of easy. And I think that's where you get into the flow. Cause I think a common mistake is people go out, run too fast and they're like, this sucks. I hate this. It's like, yeah, you're, you're really pushing your body. Okay. That's you, I, I have been doing. That. Yeah. I think that's a yeah. really common one. So it's like, I think finding that, um, that like ease so that you could go a little longer. Cause then, cause I, I hear from a lot of people, it's like, Oh, I can run for 20 minutes, like three times a week. But any beyond that, I get, uh, I get exhausted. And it's like, Oh, you sounds like you're just like racing three, five yeah. days, like 20, three times a week. It's like, that's exhausting. Well, and I think getting older, um, it, patience is so important, and that's why a lot of marathoners are older. Like that's why they're like you guys just mentioned like, patience, and like I had to shift in my chair. <laughs> like that's well, running will teach you patience. Running will, oh. and that's like I think that's why like I can push myself for you know for everything else in life. You know, like work. Uh, like if it's a long day on set, it's like you know what. It's, it's not so bad. Like if I can do a marathon, like I can do everything else. Like when you have that marathon mentality, it just makes everything so much easier. If I can do a marathon, I can do anything else. That's you can a pretty, do anything. That's, that's okay. Well, here, here's my biggest hurdle when it comes to running, because I find the act of it so repetitive and boring. So you say that Rick, you said that you kind of like mentally check out you guys, uh, I listen to a lot of my, my love of music and my love of running are pretty tied in. Like I listen to a lot of music when I run same and, music most of the time, or no, do you like, listen to different uh, stuff, uh, different or? stuff. And I, I feel like I get, have a lot of like, uh, fond personal memories of like certain albums and certain parts oh, of the city goodness. that like, you know, I'm running by and maybe I get a runner's high or I'm, I'm just really enjoying it. And then I'm enjoying the music as well. I also like to run at night and that, that feels very, not in the winter. I mean, it gets pretty cold, but, uh, it's, there's a lot of people on the street. You can run a lot more different places. Yeah, you run. I run over the bridges in the East River, and, and you like, it's just beautiful. We live in like one of the prettiest cities in the world. So I feel like that stuff helps me not feel, be so bored and helps me like connect into the the experience. I also know that you are into death metal. A lot. I sure am. Nice so, death metal yeah. up I did, top, I, yo. I just. Uh, uh, I want to do a death metal episode at some point, but I just have this image in my head of like 
looking over the the bridge, seeing all of Manhattan at sunrise, and then just screaming in your ear. <laughs> is that like yeah. the beautiful moment? Yeah. There's some pretty beautiful metal out there. there I'm sure there is. Oh, I yeah. just don't know it. We'll save that for the episode. Yeah. On that. Save it. Teresa, what do you listen to when you're running? I have, well, back when I started really running, back when I was in college, I had a disc man. Remember those? Oh, yeah. And I, um, I used to like actually carry extra discs with yeah, me, me in my pocket. <laughs> and then I was, and then like the thing is, I had to run like at a certain pace where it wouldn't um, skip. So then it was, it became like <laughs> extra work. So I'm focusing on my breathing, focusing on my body, and also focusing on this machine and hoping that it doesn't skip. But now with phones with smartphones uh with uh, like spotify and stuff like that like i can make my own playlist so i actually have separate playlists for different things like i'll have one that's just for running one just for marathon training one for weight training like you know like I have different p- playlists for um, the different workouts the different workouts like if i'm going to be sprinting a lot i'll blast nirvana like a top volume if i'm marathon training i'm gonna listen to like motown or something like that just because i could just like keep on going and sing along and you know all that stuff what what about nirvana makes you want to move forward because like me know. listening to nirvana makes me want to like sit down in a dark room i don't know because it's like smells like teen spirit you're like like it just like the, the sure. high energy and you're just like you know just like with you listening to um death metal with Rick with you listening to death metal like it's like that like the energy like the drums like the guitars like you know just like rocking out propels me forward and uh, one time totally unintentionally I was listening to a uh, creep by Radiohead not the oh, other not, the, not the other TLC. creep not yeah. the other creep uh, but there's like a lyric where it tells you to run and I was approaching a hill <laughs> yeah. on it was raining it was during a race I was approaching a hill I had I was spent and then Tom York is telling me, screaming, pleading for me to run. So I ran, <laughs> and it was amazing. I got transported a little bit there. I uh, was, I relived it like just now. It's a lot. It's sometimes I find it's like hard. It's a common thing people talk about. It's like hard to listen to people talk about running because, like, it's kind of like listening to someone tell a story about when they got high or when they got really <laughs> drunk, you know, which is like. That sounds like it was cool for you to experience, but it, I think that's what I love about it. It's like you're creating those moments for you that are, they're private. I mean, yeah. ultimately you can describe them to other people and people who run can know what they're talk, you're talking about, but that like, those are just, you, you keep them. They're not, it's not really something you experience with other people in the, it's, in the exact it's same way. It's your own personal thing. Yeah. That's like, it's a, it, yeah. And, and whatever you kind of, and, and I like the feeling of like that I'm going out and creating it. Like I'm going to leave my apartment and go out somewhere and be listening to something and then I don't know you kind of it'll kind of happen uh, I think that's like a cool feeling for me versus like forcing it or feeling like I'm gonna go watch this movie and then maybe the movie will be good it's like well I can have that experience on my own and create a, create a feeling that is memorable I have so many memories of specific places I mean I can tell you like where I ran and how far I ran and what I was listening to and I mean it's like so vivid in my mind so vivid it's like nine yeah. eleven. that was a horrible analogy <laughs> oh, yeah. that was a well, horrible zero analogy to 60 but jesus like, teresa but like seriously though like you know like we're uh with those memories like i can tell you exactly like like runs oh, i've done okay. like 15 years ago i remember very vividly what the day like, looked like you said the disman like, thing and i thought of like listening to the band misery signals in ladue missouri outside of st louis in the fall where i like fell and like dropped the disc man and it broke up and that yeah like i can oh know exactly i could take you to the exact part of the street and tell you exactly where that run was and that was 10 years ago when you guys leave your house to go on runs do you run like the same path every time or do you just go like i'll i'll just leave and then whenever the inspiration strikes i'll change my direction I will sometimes do that. Uh, now my, with my training being a little more, I, I'm like going out running a specific distance. So I have a lot of loops that I will do. Like if I'm doing 13 miles, I'll, that'll be one loop that I'll do. Or the same like, loop. Yeah, typically. Okay. Or I have a, might have a couple of them. Or like, like I have a five mile loop in Brooklyn that I do a lot. And so if I need to go out and run five miles, that's the loop I typically do. Some people just go in the park and they'll just run around the park a lot. I, like, I enjoy like getting, having some, like a, a decent amount of variety in there. And then sometimes it's nice to just go out and yeah, I'm going to run and then see where I go. It's nice. Uh, the, like you do have to have like a path. Like it's, it's annoying to run through just midtown. Do you know what I mean? So oh. like that, I won't I explore that way, but yeah. uh, there's enough, I know enough of the past now where I could kind of link things up in a way that feels a little improvisational where I'm like, Oh, maybe I'll cut across town and go over the bridge or I can loop around the bottom of Manhattan or I can X, Y, Z. 
Yeah, like I've uh, lived in Brighton Beach for the past couple of years, so I run right right on the boardwalk. Oh, yeah. So I just decide, hmm, do I want to run towards Manhattan Beach, towards Coney Island, or just like mix it up? But because it's cold, I don't run outside when it's cold. <laughs> so I just run on the treadmill and I play that game with myself, you know, so then that way I'm not completely bored. But usually my running, um, it's usually in the park, yeah. usually whenever I'm Park's out. Great. Central Park. Yeah. Central Park. When I was running uh, and living closer to the park, I, I, I was going through the park. Uh, but it did just get repetitive. But maybe it was because I was going on the same paths every time. I do like a cool, go like the spring or summer, do like a night run. You do go somewhere cool. But like like running over the bridges will make anyone a runner. Like they're, they're so pretty. And it's like you get such a view of the city. Um, I, I love that. And I love going around. Around the tip of Manhattan is a real fun run. Going down the west side and then curling around, and you can come up to Brooklyn Bridge. That all that stuff is really just gorgeous. Isn't it bad for your knees though when it comes to comparing to other cardio? Like, doesn't running if, out there or on it even on a treadmill? Like, don't they? Aren't there long term? Uh, if you if you build up too much too quickly, so if yeah. you if you went out and ran a marathon tomorrow, it would really be bad for your knees. Okay, because um, your knees are not strong enough to take that kind of. The first training up I did, I had a, some knee pain a lot. This year, I, I didn't have any I had any knee pain in like the, the cartilage part of my knees at all. And I, you know, running the marathon because my my knees are much much stronger now. Hmm. And so that all the running I'm doing and that is not putting anywhere extra wear and tear. There's and the, and the medical evidence is um, uh, up in the air. Like there's some studies that show like knee damage. There's a lot of places that show that like people who've done running for their whole life actually have stronger knees. And they suffer less consequences later in life. I think it's the like pushing yourself, doing way too much. Like if you went, if you ran forty miles this week, that would be too much, and your knees would kill, and that you'd be suffering little knee damage. But right, if you I build up slowly, yeah, uh, then that's where you're. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, I think it's just because I've lived in New York my entire life. Like I was born here, so I've just always walked yeah. long distances. I've never had any knee problems. Like, and even huh. when I don't train and then I just go ahead and it's like, ah, oh, time to do the marathon. So then I just do it. And I've never had any knee problems. Okay. And also weight training and uh, squats. Yeah. Getting your legs squats. See, I, I'm, I'm all for weight legs. training and squats. Yeah. Like, like, if you're I already love doing some of that stuff. If you're doing that, you're, yeah. you're fine. Yeah, you're probably in good shape. You yep. probably would, your, your legs have probably got the strength to carry you a little yeah, but bit. But then yep. all my muscle mass would go away from well, running. Like, it, it just, doing, I can't. If you keep doing weightlifting, too, weights. you don't have to pick one or the other. I know. I mean, if, yeah, you, 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 if you became a world class marathoner, you would have to lose some upper body weight. But yeah. if you just want to run, you know, three, four, or five times a week, you can also go to the gym and work out, too. Yeah, well, maybe I will. Like, because I'm afraid of, of losing what I've gained at the gym. That's part of the, like, running just seems like if you're trying to get a workout, Unless you love to actually run, then you're doing yourself a disservice when you could do another exercise and like build if you care more about building up your body or, or, or slimming down than you do about the actual art of running. Well, here's the thing. I mean, why work out, right? I mean, there's one reason to work out, which is to make your body look sexy naked. Right. Uh, so that's my prime. That's that's pretty much all of, all of the weightlifting is doing. Um, but if you want to actually like be healthier in the long run, running ultimately is gonna burn it's gonna make you healthier like it makes your heart oh i don't much care healthier. if i'm dead at 35 if i've got 18 abs much healthier heart healthier lungs um and it's gonna burn a lot more calories too it's gonna be easier like i eat just nothing but garbage <laughs> and usually with the amount of running i'm doing it that has worked out so far <laughs> who knows as, as i age if that'll stick you know but yeah you can it's it's uh you burn a lot more calories running because you know you have to if, if i'm running a half marathon my heart rate's up in the 170s or something crazy for you know an hour or two and that's that's a lot of calories you're burning i burned like my watch tells me how many calories i burn i think i burned like 3500 calories during the marathon Jesus. or something like that, that. Sounds, yeah that, that sounds about right yeah so, so it's uh so it's a lot what you're telling me is if i run more i can eat more crappy food you like sure I can well you're you guys are guys too so you mm-hmm. guys can like I, the thing true. is like being like i've been overweight my entire life and then uh I would lose a lot of weight and then I like fluctuate like crazy. And at my peak running, um, like I was actually, um, I mean, I was, I was smaller, but the thing is I was also really muscular and Mm. also really fast because I had the muscle, but I was also running. So you can do do that in conjunction with, you know, and have that sexy, you know, like the sexy muscles and stuff like that and still be a runner and just feel good, you know, like, and you just feel like you breathe better and, uh, you know, you, you being an actor too, like, you know, just, like with speaking and stuff like that, just like projecting and everything just works out so much better. And I'm also an opera singer. So I feel like with 
running, it helps me with singing as well. I have heard that. I have heard that it's great for like lung power and yep. and all those other vocal terms that I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've got I've got one more question when it comes to marathons in particular. Is the audience there like lining the entire race? And if so, doesn't that get really fucking boring? For the audience or for yeah, us? For the audience. Uh, so the audience, like in the New York Marathon, there's nothing like it. It's there's the nothing best like it. thing <sighs> ever. There are people lined up the entire way. The enti- there are the like, many people deep screaming at you with genuine passion. They don't know you. If you write your name in your shirt, people just yell your name the whole time. And it's like through the whole city except for the bridges and East Williamsburg where people are like... Yeah, the bridges doing, are really shopping. sad. Um, <laughs> but it's so... I mean, the energy is so uplifting. It makes you totally fall in love with New York City. Like, it, it, it's it's very genuine. It's like one of the only days where you really see the diversity of the city in a really warm... And at, you can feel everybody being so positive. Uh, and you go through the whole freaking city. It's amazing. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people when they... You know, a lot of people watching like know someone running, you know... They have friends running, and a lot of people will go to one spot and wait and find their friend, and then they'll get on the train and go to another spot and see their friend there and jump uh, around, you know? Yeah. Or it's like you live in your neighborhood, like in Fourth Ave in Brooklyn, near where I live. People just go down for the day, they drink, and they like watch people run by and they like cheer for them. No, it's, it's, they're different starts. It's not everybody starting all at once. No, right? yeah. they can't so do that. Yeah, yeah, it's but like a bunch 60. of waves. Yeah. So, yeah. like, if I'm pick, if like, let's say I pick one place right on, I don't know, pulling up, uh, you know, you mentioned Avenue A. So, if I'm right on Avenue A and I just pick that one place, how, me- for how long will different people be running by? Oh, oh gosh. God, hours. Well, seven f- hours, six hours. Because the first wave, I believe, is at nine, nine fifty. Uh, yeah. um, so that's uh, wave one. So there are and four. And that's those are like the the professional marathon runners, right? And everybody's running like a fast. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I am. Yeah. So that's um, there's actually six waves. There's the the wheelchair, like the wheelchair. Um, they go first. Uh, and then it's the professional men's. Is it and professional men's or women's first? The women go out first. So oh, never mind. In the, the videos you guys women's. sent me, it's, it's, it was it's wheelchair women's, women's yeah. men's. The, yeah. Watching the pros go by and like actually on the street oh. is amazing because you. I don't think people have a, quite an appreciation for how fast they go. Oh right. Like they're they are like the world record is two oh two oh two fifty seven. So that's like. <sighs> Four forty-one miles, four minute and forty-one miles the entire way. The entire I can't. Way. I'm I'm a pretty fast runner. I That's can wait four, I can't, four, four minutes, minutes and forty-one seconds, seconds for a mile for each mile. I can't. I'm a, Holy I'm decently. Crap. I'm all right, and I can't run a single mile faster than five minutes. You know what I mean? Like if I run and run a mile as fast as I can, I can't even run. I couldn't even stay with them. You know what I mean? The, the average person could probably stay with them for. 10 feet, 200 meters, 400 yeah. meters. Like, it's and they're, they're just, they're cruising the whole way. And that's where like when people sometimes they cheat in these races and then they're like, Oh, I just had a really good day. And I finished an hour ahead. It's like, <laughs> it's physiologically impossible. Like I, if I, I couldn't go out in the New York marathon and have a great day and win, like it's impossible. Yeah. It, like Rosie know. Ruiz from the Boston yes. marathon. Yeah. She's like the most famous cheater What'd in she the history. She, she, she like got in a tra- got on the train, on the train and, like, and then was out. like, Oh, I finished. And then she quote unquote won. She like but, wasn't sweating. Yeah. They're like, did you run like, the whole way? And she's like, yeah. yeah. And then like, they figured out that she had cheated. Yeah. Ooh. But I think that's cool that like, um, you know, if I played LeBron James in one-on-one, there's a extremely small, but some possible chance that I could beat him. Like I could just throw the ball up in the air and it could randomly go in 10 times. <laughs> right. Um, it's unlikely, but it's phys- physically possible, but it's physically impossible for me to beat any of those runners because they have sculpted their bodies. Yeah. It's just a machine. It's just their body. And it's a the machine. Path. There's they, no other years of, factors. Yeah. Years of training and like high work. running at high altitudes too. Yeah. And they, I'm sure like they all they eat it's is amazing. like cornmeal mush. That's like all they eat is cornmeal mush. <laughs> no, that, that's something really interesting to me because I hadn't. I, I I do love competition. Like it's it's very fun for me. I'll especially like I have this weird thing where I'll only talk trash about stuff that I know that I'm probably not going to win right. at. I don't know why it's so fun to me. Like I'll, I'll talk so much smack when it comes to like playing pool and I'll lose every time. Uh, but the idea of running being just you mm-hmm. you're and in, yeah, so you're in competition. it's 100% you. Yeah. Like in a way that basketball can be in a way that pool can't be because yes. random things can happen. I used to like think when I was in high school, I don't know why my running coaches didn't explain this to me. I didn't understand the training. Like, like I thought the people who were beating me were trying harder than I was. 
you know, because you go out in this race, you run as fast as you can and you get beat by a minute or two. And it's like, I just thought I didn't have the willpower and maybe that's a little bit of it, but it's, it's largely just about training. It's about like slowly and meticulously, like putting the miles in, you know, running every week, you, you know, have getting, to put the work in. Yeah. You put the work in and that's what makes your body, you know, able to then do that next thing. And it's such a cool feeling when you feel like over the course of months and then you go out and you have a run where it's like, I could not have done that. Like I ran, I ran the marathon every mile faster than I ran a 5k in a yeah. high, freshman year of high school. So I, in freshman year of high school, I could only run three miles at that pace. And I just ran the whole marathon that way. I mean, that to me, that's just, it feel, it's a cool feeling to feel like, wow, my, I've literally like, and it took so long to just work on my body you work on, you just do training, you put in the work. And that to me is where I learned a lot about determination and like, and you can effort. look at the stats and compare to where you were. Yeah, and, totally, man. Okay, yeah, I can see how that's really rewarding. It's very rewarding. Well, it's very cool. And, like, I was somebody who did not like running at yeah. all. I thought, like, oh, my God, people talk about running two miles. Oh, my God, how can you do that? Yeah. And then, like, one day something just, like, clicked. Like, I ran a little bit. And I'm like, oh, this, this feels good. And then after running the marathon, seriously, it changes your life. I, like, cried. I, like, bawled, like, the last three miles, <laughs> my very first yeah. marathon. Because there's blind runners. There are runners with – there was a guy with one leg on crutches the entire way. And I just started, like, tearing up because it was just unbelievable what you see. Besides, like, you know, the, the support, like, with all the spectators, amazing, you know. But the thing is, when you see these amazing people on the course, and that is why the spectators yeah. are there – because they see, like, the guy with one leg, you know, the blind runners who are and doing And the thing this. is, like, it's ultimately, like, pointless. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like you get – it's not like, oh, we're, like, changing the world. I mean, we're raising money and stuff like that. That's all, like, really amazing. But then it's, like, the actual act of the running and, like, nothing happens. You just do it. But it's, like, everybody's private little thing that's, yeah. like, I'm going out and doing this for me to, like, prove this to myself or to, to better myself – and there's something cool about like everyone's, you see everyone, you know that everyone's going through that, you know? And like, that's, I think where the energy comes yeah. from. There's some guy who passed me, or I guess we, we passed on fourth Ave um, this past year. Who's, um, he's like totally paralyzed except for one of his legs. Jesus. And so he's in a wheelchair, but facing backwards and he's just pushing the wheelchair with one of his legs. And he does the whole marathon like that, like every year, like we'll go online. We should have sent you this clip of like, there's like the finish line clips that they keep the finish line open until the last person finishes like the roads open back up. People can move to the sidewalk and the people who like have cerebral palsy and stuff like that, or who have like one leg who finish after like 12 or 15 hours and just watching them cross the finish line, like cry. It's like, so like, Oh, oh God. All right. God, I, I just got chills. You got to check it out. Yeah. I just got chills thinking uh, about that. Well, speaking of, I was going to say speaking of running, but we've been doing that <laughs> the whole last half hour. Uh, I actually went on a run with uh, Banu Palus, who's a uh, friend of mine, who is also a running teacher at Jackrabbit, I believe. So because I don't know a lot about the proper way to run, here's how that turned out. Banu Palus, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Did I pronounce your last name right? Paulus. God damn it. <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right. Um, so I usually have them do like warm ups. Uh, so what I'll do is like start with like doing some butt kicks. We should also mention for the listener, it's raining. <laughs> it sucks. Already, I'm not having a good time. A cold. You'll be warmed up before right. you know it. Good. All right. Nice. And now let's go into some high knees. Let's pick your knees up on here. Perfect. Already, I can feel. I'm starting to run out of breath. <laughs> I've got no cardio. Nice. Uh, so the next thing, fast feet. Um, it's exactly that. We're just quickly basically landing. shimmying. Quickly landing on the ball of your feet on here as you're doing this. Um, nice. So uh, the next thing I want to have us do are some skips. Uh, so these are just continuing exaggerating that running form once more on there. So... Um, so if you're doing it right, you should be pushing up pretty hard and jumping pretty high as you're doing so. You look like Mario. <laughs> Power up. <laughs> nice. Right. Uh, so let's go from here to the lamppost and then come right back here and skip back. Okay. Nice. Let's do it. Excellent. Next, uh, we're going to go into some side swings or chasses. Okay. Uh, chasses. Uh, we'll just be swinging our sides out, and as we're doing so, kicking our feet and extending it out. 
Um, we're doing this so that we're working our adductors and our, our, our side muscles, our IT bands in the process. All right. So, all right, let's do it. Nice. And then last, um, the, this is like a, I, like these are side steps or karaoke's. Some people call it karaoke's. <laughs> uh, I like that these are called karaoke's because you happen to be a tiny dancer. So as you're doing it on here, the the, for, the purpose of this is to like work your feet as you're doing that so it should go a little bit quicker. So exactly like that. Yeah. Yep. I don't know how I'm doing this. You're doing it. Yeah. Exactly. I feel like every action figure I tortured as a child. <laughs> Twist it back. Oh, God, I'm tired of it. <laughs> we haven't even started running yet. No. We'll call it right here. Great. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <sighs> and I know we're warmed up. Like, we could probably do like two miles. So, see how you're feeling. So, we'll see, because yeah. I know Grant doesn't want to be out in the rain, and okay. guess what? Neither does Aaron. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's do it. Start. And like I said, pace, it's like on an effort from, on an effort scale of one to ten, I would say, like ten being super hard. I'd say I'll keep it about like a, like a two or three. I'm glad you're here, um, because I, I think I'd definitely be going harder yeah. if I wasn't, Okay. if I, if I was alone. Just because I'd be thinking like, oh, that's what running is supposed to be. So yeah. it's nice that you're here to sh- like keep that strong pace. Yeah. I think it's just too often, like I was saying before, like so many people will make that mistake, even the fastest of runners, of just going out way too hard right at the start. But Wait, how many, how many miles have you already run today? Uh, so while I was waiting for you, I ran about three miles. <laughs> oh, my God. And then... I was bored, so I ran three miles. I, well, I was listening to some podcast, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which podcast? Uh, uh, the one about wrestling. Oh, my podcast. Oh. <laughs> but don't mind but if no, I don't. I hope you're listening to this one <laughs> if, while you're running right now. <laughs> hey, future Benu, thank you. <laughs> Palos. Palos? Palos. God damn it! <laughs> nice. Um, I, I, I like this pace because, like, I think the times I've gone running myself. Yeah. I've been thinking, like, well, that's not running. This is jogging. Right, yeah. So technically what we are doing right now is jogging, but it counts as running. It counts as running, yeah. Okay. But, yeah. But it's like I said, you want to keep the effort easy at the start. And then, and you're also still like building your heart rate up as you're doing so. So you want to like build it up to a, to, a, to a comfortable point so that like, it's like after like five, 10 minutes or so, you'll feel good enough to be able to pick it up after a while. Uh, about an hour ago, I had an egg Chipotle chicken, <laughs> cheddar, sounds, and avocado with sounds, Chipotle sauce okay, on a roll. So, so this sounds good, uh, but uh, how long ago did you have it? About the, an hour, okay. maybe an hour and a half. Okay, so in terms of timing, probably not the best. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, you usually want the, like you don't want to have anything too spicy or too creamy. Oh, damn it, I did both of those. <laughs> I know. It sounded really good. So it was. I'm not, I'm not against it. But not worth it in retrospect, yeah. but here we are. As you're building up on here, it's you're, you're going to want to work on landing more forefoot, midfoot, so, which looks pretty good here for you. So this is good. Yeah, so you're doing good. Oh, God, that was acid reflux. No, it's okay. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Uh, so this isn't happening right now. Yeah. But it has happened when I've gone for runs in the past. I'll get like a sharp pain in my back. Okay. What what the what the hell is that about? Where whereabouts in your back? Like between shoulder blades or so. Oh, okay. Huh. Usually, I mean, if it's more in the shoulder blades, sometimes it has more to do with like your upper body. You might be a little too tense when you're when you're like when you're running. Okay, so loosen up my upper body. Yeah. And uh, but hold myself up straight. Yep. Okay. Um, your face, um, your jaw should be like kind of loose, not like, uh, but just like a little bit. So yeah, just slightly loose on there. Nice.
Nice. Oh. Well, let's see here. We're about 15 minutes in here. So How many miles is this? We are 1.31. Oh, God. Yeah. You want to talk about more wrestling stuff? Sure. So in NXT, Bailey has this uh, huge super fan. This adorable. Which one's heel? Which one's face? Uh, Bailey is the, the You've been face. Watching Steven the, Universe. Sasha's the heel. Oh my god! Yes. Right yeah. It's so good. Oh, I love the show. Yes. Yeah. You up to date? But, uh, so I didn't know there was any new episodes lately. Like, the last thing actual I saw. I rewatched was the Age of uh, Ultron Warren, recently. Okay. And I started rewatching Civil even, War. Uh, her parents bring her to. And I realized that in every single superhero movie, the bad guys' plots are all really convoluted. Like I feel like. There's a tiny little man yeah. with a tiny little yet sharp spear. He's poking me in the heart. And it's not going to kill me, but it's, it's like, dude, stop it. He's also just reminding you, like, you remember this feeling? You remember this feeling? <laughs> yes, this feeling I'm feeling ah, at this very moment. It means you're going to keep going. Oh, God damn it, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time. When I tried to force myself to just run and in the summer stepped out of my house and just thought, all right, let me just try to run for a minute nonstop. Just try a minute. Just I don't care. And just pushed myself, struggled mightily, just went all out because I didn't really have any concept or grasp. But let me just like go and made it. So I was so out of breath, but I made it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I'm not completely overweight. So then I'm like, all right, let me try another minute. And I, I quickly fell apart after like 15 seconds. How does running in the rain like this, does it help or hurt? Like, because it's definitely cooling us off. Yeah. But, but it's also wet. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I've, I'm probably one of the few but I love it. Um, yeah, I, I actually kind of like this right now. Huh. Uh, I don't know, it's just the feeling of oh, just rain splashing on your face. <laughs> but like, I think what I like about running is that when I'm out there, um, there's just, it gives me a chance just to explore, clear my mind, and yeah, and then just kind of like take in everything around me and and I just love just shutting my mind off and and I just like it makes me like really appreciative of just everything here I don't know what's rain and what's sweat but it's all bad you got this alright oh Balls of feet, balls of feet, balls yep. of feet. So well, one thing I do, I try not to think so much about the form. I just look straight ahead. All right. Swing your arms out. Oh, that's easier. Yeah. Oh, oh we're almost done. Oh, stay, we're almost done. Stay with me. Oh, we're almost done. Stay with me here. Oh, I'm not going to die. You're not going to die. I just feel like I'm going to die. Oh, pains all along my stomach. Oh. <laughs> If you're struggling, it means you're doing good here. Oh, no. We need some of pain. We're good. Oh, how long was that? 2.10. 2 2.10. 2 oh. 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 Nice. Okay. Let's walk it for a little bit on here. Wait, what? We've got to move more? Yeah. Oh. Just to like lower our heart rate a little bit on here, catch our breath. Won't that happen naturally? Uh, you want to move a little bit on here. So. Do I? Yeah, you do. Why? <laughs> What's good post workout food? Can I have a burrito? Uh, any, that's a good mix of carbs and protein. Okay. So, this coming from a person who eats a lot of mac and cheese, but. <laughs> uh, God's <yeah>. milk. <laughs> oh. So. Usually after this, after the runs, I usually have some of my students do strength work. Uh, so, like, meaning I'll have them, I'll guide them through some 
lunges and body weight squats. What? No. I, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't as bad as it was literally three minutes ago when I was running. Um, you started a lot faster. You started slower at the beginning and then you went faster at the end on there, which is exactly yeah. what the goal was on here. So. Oh, yeah. Going slower and running with, with people coaching me, that's, that made it all manageable. Yeah. I, uh, I think I've got a relatively good level of determination and willpower in my life, but when it comes to running, I think if I'm doing it by myself, I don't know if I'd be able to stick with it like that. Uh, I honestly, the biggest factor was learning that like, oh, I can just jog and that counts as running. Yeah. Like that, that makes it all infinitely more tolerable. So that was that. That was my experience there. Uh, I can say not for me, uh, but I can say I get it. But I can also say, screw all that. I'll, I'm going to be in the gym where there's actually somewhere warm to be. But thank you to Banu for trying. So if I started this episode at a four, I, I, I get it a lot more now. And I kind of get the, the, the meditative, damn near spiritual uh, idea behind it. I'd say it's down to a two. Like, I understand it's still not my favorite way to exercise, but I, I see the benefits of it a lot more. And I do like eating a lot of Taco Bell. Well, you can still have your Taco Bell and right. still, you know, run. It's still fine. You no, don't have to eat. No, that's the reason why I'll eat. I'll oh, run. yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, you don't have to be stuck with, like, cornmeal mush. Oh, yeah, totally. Eat as much Taco Bell as you, as you want. I mean, you're a dude, so you could totally still burn all the calories while women just keep all the calories on our hips. So. You heard it from Teresa Hui. You can eat all the Taco Bell and junk food that you want as long as you run. That as is long a as fact. you run. Unless Science you're a girl. Fact. Unless you're a girl, and then it goes straight to your hips. Don't be sexist. No. Well, that, that's what happens to me, so that's literally what happens. <laughs> it's not me being sexist. It's just like, like uh, <laughs> physiologically, that's what happens. Because women, the reason why women aren't as fast as men is because we're supposed to, we're supposed, quote unquote, supposed to give birth and, you know, like bear children and stuff like that. So we are actually genetically built to carry extra weight on I, our hips and thighs. That makes sense. So, yeah, enjoy your Taco Bell. Have a chalupa <laughs> for me. Have two chalupas for Pour me. Pour one chalupa out for Teresa. Oh, I love chalupas. Uh, Rick, Teresa, thank you guys so much thank for you. joining thank us. Thank you. Uh, guys, do you have anything to plug? Rick. I'm going to show every Sunday night at the Magnet Theater called Cornfeld and Andrews. It's an improv show. It's fun. You should come check it out. With you and Lewis Kornfeld, who is also a phenomenal improviser and improv teacher. And he ran two miles this week, he told me. Oh. oh. So there you go. Look out for that. Nice. You guys are running buddies. Woo-hoo. Teresa, how about you? Do you have anything to plug? Uh, yeah, every once in a while, my husband, uh, Jerry Skids, does a uh, podcast called Mouse Rants. Um, I'm on that every once in a while, so I sing in that as well. And uh, also, I sing for uh, the New York Roadrunners. So I sang at the marathon this year. So Ooh. my next race that I'll be singing at is the NYC Half Marathon on March 19th, 2017. So I'll be uh, there. if you, ah, so you'll be hearing me. Oh, yep. that's wonderful. And uh, what is Mouse Rants? Uh, Mouse Rants is a Disney podcast. It's an adult Disney podcast. So lots of swear words. It's by. It's about a uh, basically. It's people who love Disney, but you know, it's not all perfect. It's not all pixie dust and magic and everything like that. So. <laughs> Yeah, that is that? that is my big understanding of Disney. That is yeah. pixie dust and magic. No, like it's not everything is. So uh, you know, keeping it real. <laughs> uh, Rick, I know that you're not on any of those interweb things, but uh, Teresa, would you like to plug your Twitter, or do we just cut this part of the uh, interview out? Sure, you can. T- uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ruben Butte. It's com- com- it's complicated, so it's R U B E N B E A U T, and I am also at Ruben Butte at Instagram as well too. And you can uh, you can look me up on the Facebook as well. You can type in my name. I got some pages there and all that good stuff. 
I will. Actually, I think we already follow each other. We already follow each other, so yeah. Uh, But if you would like to join our little friendship and follow me, you can uh, follow me on, hey, it's Aaron Gold on Twitter and Instagram. And more importantly, you can follow this podcast at Don't Mind Podcast on all of those different mediums. You can also kick us an email at don'tmindpodcast at gmail.com. And leave us a review on iTunes. If you do that, I'll read your name along with something that I like about you. And to wrap up this show, I want to thank both of you guys. I want to thank our producer, Grant Goldberg, who is there with us, my better half. Uh, Also, Banu Palouse for teaching me the wonders of running. Uh, And because this is the, it's not the first episode of the new year, but it is the first episode we've recorded in the new year. All last year, Grant hated the ending catchphrase, keep on minding. Well, Grant, I love you. I've got your notes. For the new year, we'll change the catchphrase. This is just for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. And a mind is a terrible thing to don't.